Welcome to Skeptico, where we explore controversial science and spirituality with leading researchers, thinkers, and their critics. I'm your host, Alex Sikaris, and as many of you know, one of the goals of this show is to push past the stuck-on-stupid discussion around extended consciousness, and that's really where science has pushed us, hasn't it? I mean, let's take past life regression, for example. Science would, of course, dismiss the entire phenomenon with a wave of the hand and maybe a little gibberish about extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Worse yet, we'd be told, as we often are, that it's actually a scam perpetrated by greedy New Agers who are looking to exploit the weak and the gullible. So how do we push past that blockade that the pseudo-skeptics have built? Well, first of all, I'd suggest that you need the right kind of guest. And I'm thinking and hoping that we might have just that kind of guest today. Kathy Mingo is a psychic and a medium in the UK. She specializes in past life regression and shamanic healing work. She's going to tell us what that means. She comes to us highly recommended by our friend Claire Broad, who documents her own rather amazing experience with Kathy in her new book. And as a special bonus, and as Kathy and I were just chatting about, Kathy has been brave enough and open enough to agree to do. Or stupid enough. <laughs> <laughs> but she has agreed to try and do some kind of demonstration. I don't know how it's going to turn out. She's never done anything like this. We're not like trying to test her in any way because she said, I've never done anything like that. But I thought since her work is kind of unusual and unique, that just to give people, uh, to give all of you and me a sense for what it's about, we might do a demonstration. So with all that, Kathy, welcome to Skeptico, and thank you so much for joining me. Well, thanks, Alex, and thanks for having me, and hi to everyone at Skeptico that's listening in. Well, great. Awesome. You know, as I explained to you, I kind of have evolved into playing this little game that I call <laughs> Skeptico Jeopardy. Fabulous. <laughs> and this one, since my introduction was kind of limited, I think the natural place to start is with you. And who okay. is Kathy Mingo? Okay. Um, well, I'm just a very ordinary person that just happens to do what some people call an extraordinary job. I don't think it is. I just think what I do is very natural. I do need to put a caveat in. I don't actually call myself a medium. But I, when I'm in someone's auric field, so that's what I would do. I work through someone's bioplasmic aura field. So the energy around the body or the aura. And by just as a byproduct, sometimes or quite often, people that have passed over come in to say hello. So it's literally, it's a byproduct of what I do. Can I jump in there with the question? Yeah. Because I think that there is, you, you say that in such a matter of fact way that it's, it's <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. I love that because that's where we want to go. But I think then we need to step back and say, what is your understanding of an aura? And okay. how, how might your understanding of an aura be different than, you know, some of the other stuff you hear out there in terms of other people and they talk about auras or aura cameras or, yep. you know, being, you know, w w do you have any understandings of that that are different than what people might normally encounter? And then related to that, uh, why do you think that's real? When did that come into your experience that there is such a thing? Okay. Um, there's a long answer to this. I will, I will do it as quickly as I can. So I was trained as a past life regression therapist through hypnosis. That's where my training came from. So I was working in a shop called Quest and the medium had not shown up that day. So I was asked, would you fill in? And I thought, like I'm doing with this, I kind of thought, I have to try everything. I'm like that. I, I'm kind of off the hoof. So I will give anything a go. No harm, no foul. So this man turned up and I said to him, all I know and all I could understand that I needed him to do was to lie down so I could go through his auric field. I, I see it as a field of quantum energy around the body that houses information both from the past and from the future. 
I see it like that. I see it as a holographic sphere, if you will. Let me push on that a little bit further yeah. because I'm just really interested. When you say that's how you see it, is that because that's how you were trained? I no, mean, I wasn't trained in it at all. So I how do, how, what was that experience like then? I mean, that, that whole experience, we could probably <laughs> deconstruct. It's, it's incredibly interesting. I mean, first of all, how do you wind up in a class for past life regression? Okay. You know, that would be question number <laughs> There's a one. story for that as well, Alex, I'm afraid. My whole, life has, my whole life has been a series of entwined synchronicities that had I not listened to that, would have I wouldn't be where I am now. So I, I'm very open on if I'm guided by the universal flow, if you will, I'll always go with it. So I was, uh, I would digress a bit. I was, um, I'm a croppy, I'm a crop circle fan. So I was in Wiltshire on top of a hill. I didn't know what I was doing with my life. And I literally put my hands up to universe and went, can you like, give me a bit of a clue. I get home from my holiday and on the mat of my um, flats through the door, through the post box was um, an invitation to do past life regression therapy. So I called them and I went, I have no idea how you've got my address because I never signed up for this. The woman searched and she went, you're not actually on my database. So I went, great, I'll sign up. Because I just thought that was, I'd asked. So I went and did past life regression through training through hypnosis. That was what I initially did. Okay, so. I mean, I mean there, there's so many parts. <laughs> I know, fantastical, I know. Well, no, it's not just, it, it is fantastical, definitely. It does correspond with so yeah, many wow. stories we've heard in the past about synchronicities. Few yeah. of us, including myself, have been brave enough to always follow those synchronicities in yes, our life. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we look back and go, wow, why didn't I trust that more? Yeah. This is, it is no doubt a profound coincidence. I'd even, let's, we're going to keep peeling back the layers here. When you say you're a crappie and, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I appreciate that on one hand. On the other hand, it's like, no, damn it. I mean, it seems to be something very, very important to you. And the yes. larger question of what's going on with crop circles is incredibly important. We've done yes. a couple of shows on them and people that, have uh, have the the one thing that I get about crop circles that I think is worth exploring is that if we separate the crop circles for a minute from their origin in terms of their assumed origin are yes, ET yes. that comes down in this craft and mm -hmm. get back to something that so many people have reported and, and kind of demonstrated in some ways is that there is some connection to extended consciousness yes. that even comes through being in these crop circles. They are both a, a, a portal for this extended realm, whatever that extended yes. realm is, and they're in between this physical realm and, and there. So well, I guess we do have to peel back there and say, <laughs> what is your understanding of what a crop circle is and what is your connection to crop circles? Okay, so um, my belief system, and it is my, it's a very, it's a contentious subject, crop circles especially in the crop circle community itself. There are some that are definitely man-made. I 100% know that. But what's interesting is when I've heard crop circle make it, some of them are not. So I, I will get told off from the man-made section that say they're all man-made. And then there's the other section that say that none of them are man-made. I do feel that there is disinformation weaved in to perhaps, as there is with everything, isn't there? again and, and people go nuts when I do this all the time but I, I'm, I'm sorry because so many of the things you said there are super important one of the things that I learned when I first started investigating crop circles is even the distinctions you're making become very blurred in terms oh, of yeah. man-made versus uh, not man-made because yes what we found is when we really go push the people who admit to them being man-made they say yeah, it was man-made, but you know what? It was kind of strange. Yeah. <laughs> I was woken up out of a dream at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I had this image that I should, this, ge this complex geometric image that I should go put in a field, and I did it. Now, yes. is that man-made in the usual way we well, think about it? I suppose man-made in the way that the formation is laid down physically. But I know that there is, um, I'm... 
I know that there's consciousness that happens within crop circles. Man-made crop circles, many of the um, crop circle makers say that there is paranormal, I hate that word. I think it's normal, but let's just call it paranormal for, for sake of this conversation. They, they have things that happen, cameras don't work. They do have, um, I have manifested a crop circle myself, but I think we'll talk about that later on. Manifested a glyph that you couldn't dismiss it. Was I connecting into a, a man-made consciousness? One of, the, one of the crop circle makers that I do know said that he's God's pencil. I love that because they, wherever their glyphs come from, it's coming from consciousness, I believe. Well, that's a very interesting and important point there because when you say God's pencil, that puts us in a different direction than <laughs> does the ET explanation. And I don't want to get away from the ET explanation because we want to, we don't know what that means either, but it is yeah. a pigeonhole we might want to go to. What if we return to your story then? Okay. Is there some kind of spiritual transformative experience for you that was associated with you being in this crop circle or being part of the crop circle community or experience? Yes, Did you have a absolutely. Absolutely. My whole spiritual existence, I think, is interwoven in synchronicity be because of, and maybe the area that the crop circles are in as well, which is very special, which is the Wiltshire landscape. So that also has a lot of ley lines. So there's there's that interwoven with it as well, I think. But when I just come out, literally come out of a crop circle that day, which was a beauty, there was a lot of um, transcendent energy that was going on. You, you can sometimes, if you lay down there long enough, if the farmer allows, because there's also the the cost of lost crop and everything else that goes into it, there's almost a kind of um, time slip. I th I'm not saying alien, I'm just saying you can sometimes lose time in a way that I think it's very meditative. It's it is transform transformative. I think it's almost metaphoric. That would be my. So when I stood there on that hill, which was on Milk Hill, which is being very famous crop circles, and put my arms up, I didn't expect that the answer would be, you know, we expect an answer right away, don't we? Like, you know, God's going to come down to whoever and give us this great answer. But sometimes time doesn't work like that. So I had to look at this leaflet from this past life regression college which i'd never even contacted and thought right well i need to go down that route and which i did so picking back <laughs> up on your story well, this is great stuff kathy I, I, this is great stuff so picking back up on the story incredible coincidence right there's the leaflet yes. you call up your name isn't even on the list not so on the list <laughs> <laughs> okay knock three times i'm answering yeah I, yeah I absolutely and then the further coincidence that you're in a class, and I mean, it, it just would sound bizarre if we didn't have the rest of the story, that the teacher would pick up and leave one day and say, Kathy, you take over, and you would proceed to just kind of do this auric kind of thing yeah. that you don't even know that you're trained to do, but it just no. kind of happens. The other thing I find interesting, and I'd like you to kind of expound upon a little bit, is that you seem to process this as energy and then you even through yes. quantum energy and we're not even going to go there because we don't know exactly what that means no, no, fair enough but i take it that that's how you are experiencing this you're not experiencing the voice of god you didn't see the virgin mary you didn't see no. jesus you didn't see any of that you saw lights and energy around a person what do you think that means number one okay. and number two how has that kind of unfolded and proven itself to you as your practice is going on you've worked now with hundreds or i don't know thousands of people yeah, lot of people. yeah. i mean or is a it's not really a great word for it either to be fair but so when this um when this man I, all i knew was that to work in this man's energy he needed to lie down for some reason and i knew i needed to um i don't touch i just put my hands over and he's lying there. I didn't know this man from Adam. And I, I went on and on about this. I said to him, you've got pins in your neck, down your neck, down your spine. And he went, Kathy, I haven't. <laughs> and usually I, I should have gone, no, I've got this wrong. I couldn't let it go. So I went, I, I couldn't let it go. And I kept saying it. We talked to his grandfather, blah, blah, blah. Didn't think anything of it. And literally about 48 hours later, he got hit by a truck 
because he was a motorcyclist. <laughs> and the next time he came to me, everywhere that these pins had been, I felt and seen were where they actually were physically. So that kind of blew my mind a bit. Blew his mind as well, because the next time he came to see me was in one of those great big head halos. So, so I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, there, so there's two parts of that is one okay. is how you would explain it. And then two, I guess that's what you're saying when you say, how would you explain it? The other part of it is what are the implications of that? And that's what I was kind of, so I want to break that down a little bit for folks, because that's what I was alluding to in the intro to the show. And sometimes people think it just sounds like an angry rant or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I want to let people know that it's, it's not really that. It's like, we have to really understand how we've been blocked from really asking questions in a deeper way. And that's what we're going to try and do now. We're going to try and wrestle some hunches out of you. You don't have to have the complete answer, like, <laughs> in some kind okay. of science, but you have a hunch, you know, because once we say, okay, there's something there that we want to dig into, there's a bunch yeah. of questions that fall from that. Like, what is our relationship to time? Was yes. would be a natural thing about that. The other is this whole question of healing. I mean, there's questions about healing that I don't see asked very much at all. I mean, from a spiritual perspective, yeah. why healing? Why do we need to heal? Should we heal? Are we on a healing path or not on a healing path? What does that mean? What yeah. is your role in that? Why do you need to be involved in that? You know, I mean, you're yeah. God's pencil. Well, maybe your God's <laughs> plan is for someone to be healed or not healed. I mean, there are a million questions there. I don't even care which one we start with, but <laughs> I, since I teed it up, what does that experience that you just described tell us about time? Oh, I think it tells us that, well, for me at least, see, I, I, I'm, I struggle with the concept of time, especially within the York field, like past, future. It's so finite isn't it and we're dealing with i think infinity for me energy is energy it's inf infinite but time places this constriction that something's in the past or something's in the future but when when he was lying there obviously in our corporeal sense i was going into what i call the future but for him this might be a bit controversial but i do believe that the auric field is like a book and if you read a book, you can read the front or the back, can't you? You can go straight to the back and know the ending. I believe in the more and more that I'm starting to do energy work, that's what we're dealing with. Some sort of information packet, like a SIM card. So I was just going a little bit forward into the information because I couldn't, had I been known that, I should have said to him, don't go on your motorbike. Because you're gonna, but I didn't because I wasn't given that information. It was very matter of fact. This is what's what I see, and this is what ended up happening. I couldn't change the outcome, maybe not for me to change, perhaps. So let's dig in a little bit further in terms of uh, because I think people will be interested in this. What you think you're actually doing then during this healing process because healing is super important to so many of us for so yeah. many reasons. We're suffering. We feel yes. like we need relief from that suffering and we're seeking healing and you're offering that service that seems to work for so many people. So you have people yeah. come in and said, I felt this way before and I felt yes. better after. We yes. could go do the science and I'd love to go do the science on that but we can't in this interview, we just have to kind of take your word for it. Yeah, but sorry. The one, question <laughs> that, the one question that I think doesn't get asked enough is, what is your understanding of precisely what you're doing as part of that healing process with the auric field? So what I believe I'm doing, and obviously it's perception, isn't it? Everything's perception really. So, but I feel that I'm going through perhaps the cellular aspect of that person's energy the bioplasmic field or as such a crack word if you excuse my language it just doesn't encapsulate all that is because it's spiritual healing it's physical healing it's emotional healing mental healing it can all it, it conglomerates into this one thing but it's many things in the one i do like to sort of think that it's a bit of a paradox as well does that make sense so i literally i'm going through an auric field 
Um, past life stuff can come up, future life, but it can also, um, I can give you an example if you like, and I know it's just taking my word for it, but I have a client who, she sees me every three months, it's like a therapy. She's very rich, she doesn't, she has no skepticism at all, which is great. And she was so, usually I, I just talk to her relatives, that's what she wants. That's not really my thing, but it's what a lot of people want. I've got an opinion on that, but, but this time she went, I'm feeling a bit tired. Will you go through my aura? So I went through the bioplasmic field and all I said to her was, I believe, or I can feel, actually physically feel a, um, a delineation within the auric field. So darker spots or heavier spots. And I said to her, I think you might have a cyst in your liver. Didn't think anything of it. She had one of those full body scans and the woman came back and she went, all you've got really is just a little cyst in your liver. So she came back and she said, I've just spent 400 quid to be told exactly what you've just told me. But I'm not a scientist, so I'm not, I'm not privy, am I, to having laudits about healing because I'm not a doctor or I'm not medical. Well, but what does that mean? Well, let's set that aside for a second. And, and let me ask you again, Kathy, and I don't know if I'm phrasing it the right way. What is your experience about what you're doing and let's put it in the context of what other people say because there's other people who do similar kind of things yes. to you and sometimes they'll come back and they'll say i am directed by the hands of jesus i'm not putting that oh, down yeah yeah I'm just saying you know people will say that or other people would say i'm using my spirit guides to direct me towards this yes. or i have an angel or this you yeah. are saying i don't do any of that well, <laughs> I don't know if they do any of it either. Okay. So I think what you do is is interesting in particular because, you know, we connected it to this crop circle thing and your experience with that. And, and the other thing that's interesting, or so much to unravel, the other thing that's interesting about connecting it to the crop circle is that crop circles are in the physical plane, yes. in the physical yes. realm. Somebody who says I'm, uh, the, the hands of Jesus are guiding me as I, you know, do therapy on somebody. Yes. I have no way of touching that. You are saying on the other hand, wait a minute, I went into this crop circle field. Here's a photo of it. And there was this energy field. Here's the scientist who measured it. And here's how he said his cameras kind of like you said, yeah, the batteries yeah. were dead. We have kind of a phenomenon, or a, a whole range of phenomena that, that we can kind of put in the physical realm. So you seem to be straddling this almost technology, if you will, associated with that. And I, I love your openness in your story too, that, hey, she asked me, I kind of stumbled into doing past life. I stumbled into <laughs> doing medium readings. I still, yeah. But I think you have a sense, Kathy, that there's something else that, that, that what are you following there? What's, what's guiding you in terms of driving this ability that you have? Do you, do you know, or do maybe you don't care too much about that. You just kind I, of do your thing. I just do it. I think I'm not making excuses. I, I'm very receptive. I like quantum physics. I know you don't want to go down that route, but it does seem to be playing out more and more that we are all intertwined. So and my energy, my auric field, they say that there's seven layers of the aura um, that there's seven chakra points. There's, in my understanding, there's way more than that. And we, our energy is infinite. Energy is infinite. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, infinite. But we've got this mental constriction that stops, I think, a very organic practice. If I was, if I was in medieval times, no one would think twice about what I do. They would send them to me and go, you know, they've got the pox. What can you do about it? There wouldn't be any of that mental rigidity about what I do or what shamans do. I would say I'm a bit more on a shamanic level, if I'm honest. Energy is just energy and we can all interpret it. Okay. Um, a related question, I guess, would be on this whole issue of channeling. Again, yes. it's, it's controversial for a number of real understandable reasons in that, you know, people... There's a lot of different channeled information out there. There's channeled yes. information that we find is kind of not so great channeled information. It comes, it, it comes to be proven to kind of pull people down the wrong path, kind of a hungry ghost kind of thing. Yeah, There's yeah. also channeled information that seems quite profound that, 
inspires people. I guess I'd have similar kind of questions about, first of all, what do you even think is going on with channeling along the lines of, you know, who are you channeling? What, okay. is, what is being channeled? Um, yeah. Why is that channel available? I mean, again, I, I do feel like these questions are not usually asked, instead yeah. stuck on verifying and shaming, oh my gosh, you were wrong on this, or yes. that person's fake, rather than yeah. trying to understand the phenomenon more generally. It, what are some of your, again, hunches in terms yeah. of who you're channeling, what is being channeled? Okay. Um, for me, again, I think channel is pretty much like I was talking about with the aura, it's information. I really believe that energy is information. And, you know, it could, okay, Jesus come in, channeling Jesus. I don't work that way. If I channel, I, I think it's a telepathy between consciousness and, and my mind, or I don't know, telepathy of greater mind. But as you're saying about the Akashic Records, I'm a really firm believer that there's no original information in the universe. I think it's all been there and it's like, it's kind of like a pick a mix, if you will, of what you need to channel. For me, I don't, I don't need to channel. Um, I don't definitely don't channel with people that have passed. So, you know, people that have passed over, I don't do that. But if I get information from what I call a higher source, I, I'm funny with the word spirit guide. I'm funny with the word spirit guardian. I don't like labels, but obviously we need a label, don't we? So we can understand the archetype of it. Well, so let's I, help us help us understand that. It's something I'm very interested in. So if just say I got a channel through at the moment, I don't, I, I've got one of my bugbears and I'm not trying to be controversial. I kind of am is I'm going to just say, okay, so they, I've got a 16th century Chinese monk. I don't need to change my voice to create, um, that vision of having a Chinese person's voice because that person is no longer incarnate, they're disincarnate, they're, they're not here. So I'm gonna channel that information through my own voice. Does that make sense? It does, and that's a, a really great, tiny little example. Have you ever connected with what you identify as being a 16th century Chinese monk? <laughs> um, I would say what I probably have channeled is the frequency of that information rather than a 16th century monk. Why do you make that distinction? And do you believe that there are spirit beings, if you will? You know, I mean, our, our, our ancestors, when we do a medium reading yeah. and we yeah. get specific information and they tell us things that are important to us about yes. our life. And I was there for your daughter's, you know, Yes. Birthday party. <laughs> what is, how do you process that? What do you think that means? Okay. So yes, I do believe in spirits. I, I do believe in higher energies, ascended masters, but my view is that it's an energy thing. If I've got someone that's passed over that comes in, I think, and I'm starting to believe this a little bit more and more, the more I do this, that I'm possibly talking to an echo or a resonant memory of that soul that comes through in the in the physical body so I can understand, you know, you're, you're tall, you've got dark hair, your name's Derek. Does that make sense? But what I'm actually linking to is an echo, a resonant memory of their, their life, their soul. It's all about soul for me. So do you think that Derek in that case <laughs> is directing that communication uh, through that frequency? Yes. Because, okay. Yeah, I do. I'm just trying to distinguish that, you know, I don't think Derek is coming in because the body's gone, the body's been dealt with. I know that there's cellular memory held within the physical body through any incarnation, but that's what I believe, a kind of memory. And they bring through memory. They bring through um, special memories, love memories. But they also bring through some conflicting <laughs> and some contradictory information. Yes, Sometimes absolutely. Sometimes they bring through some very religious information that seems to contradict our understanding of other yes. people who say that religion stuff is 
okay, but there's a deeper truth to it. Or they yes. bring through stuff that, you know, back again, something we've been touching on a little bit. Some of them are nasty, malevolent entities that are disguising themselves and are intentionally seem to be deceiving people. And that seems to be provable in some sense. You know, yeah. when the spirit comes through and tells you, hey, your real path is to go and sleep with your best friend's <laughs> wife and try and seduce her, you know, don't know if that's really in no. the best interest of all involved. <laughs> but that's what I see. I've never met anything like that. I, I'm not. Um, I'm not scared of anything. I will do um, spirit cleansing of houses, Ouija board. I'm not scared of that because I think if you've got a pure intention when you're doing it, it can only resonate on a pure intention. Uh, yeah, of course there are things out there. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm totally down with the, you know, the secret of the ascent is to always look up and, you know, like that's yeah. about Claire's vibe too, is that, you know, focus on this. I, I do always have to kind of bring it back to, you know, we have this in Britain, you know, you have a whole John D thing who probably <laughs> was right responsible for setting up the, the roadmap, the blueprint for the British empire. And he's doing exactly that. Right. So he's yeah. going down this really dark path. And at the end, they're doing all this crazy sex magic stuff and yeah, yeah. stuff that really doesn't in, in, in the pattern of his life is not positive. And we yeah. see, people, you know, Aleister Crowley, pick on the Brits here today, you know, yeah, why not? Crowley, all this evil stuff, this stuff that no matter what you think of Aleister Crowley, no one would model their life after that. No one thinks that that leads to spiritual growth yeah. and spiritual advancement of your soul. So, yeah. and, and then if we take that on a more, you know, we have the pedo Pope right now, you know, and we have the, that whole thing, even if people say that. And so I say that and sometimes people get offended. It's like, gee, I don't know if you have a handful of lifelong friends and they're all pedophiles. I think yes. the burden of proof shifts on you. <laughs> to prove, yeah, exactly. You know, but, <laughs> so they're, they're, it, it's, I get what you're saying and what Claire's saying that you haven't encountered it. Clearly it's a force out there that seems to have a pretty yeah. good opinion. I think it's, a, for me, I think it attached to ego. I mean, what I know, um, I'm quite interested in Crowley, actually, because I, I, I'm not opposed to looking at the dark, because the dark and the light to me is exactly the same thing. But when it goes into ego, that's where I think it goes into really low vibrational energy. And that's when I think all, all hell can break loose, when it's really brought into a low vibration. Do you mean yes. that literally as well as figuratively? I do mean what that do, literally, yes. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you think about hell? What do you think hell is? And I'll give you two choices to kind of oh. pare, it, pare it down okay. a little bit. I think uh, some people I've heard kind of ascribe to the as below, so above kind of thing, the way I put it, or to turn yeah. the phrase around, is that if you want to find a bunch of creepy people who are seeking out kind of nasty stuff in our yes. increasing their in their negative energy by associating with other people with negative energy hey you can do that right here in any town yes. you can go find that and maybe that's what's happening on this spiritual level as well other people contrary to that say no there really is this force out there that is on par with the white force, the, the, the light force, and it's the dark force, and it's kind of pulling things in another direction. It, 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 you can pick another answer, but among yeah. those two, what do you think? Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know about hell. Personally, I think hell is what we live in the illusion. I really do. I think if hell plays out, we are, we are living it at the moment, especially the way the world's going. So I, dark and light to me is duality. You can't have dark, can you, without light, because dark is just where the light hasn't gone in yet. So I think hell's down here. I'm not on the heaven and hell spectrum. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've kind of really blown the Skeptico Jeopardy model because you are oh, okay. so awesome to talk to and you are so open about just kind of sharing all this information. Are there any other topics? I, I want to do this demonstration in whatever time we have, and I want to make sure, uh, you know, we are respectful of your time. Um, what other topics do you think we might talk about? I do want to talk about your practice, so let's talk okay. about that. Why people 
do seek you out. And I understand, you have to understand that Kathy is very sought after at this point. She has quite a waiting list. That doesn't mean you still shouldn't try and contact her. But she's not out there scraping to kind of scrounging around trying to get some work out of this. No, no, I don't no. think that's her, her main thing. But she does have a practice and you should tell people about that because no doubt there are people listening who this show is for them. This show okay. is reaching out for them for a reason. Um, so yeah, my practice, obviously I work, um, I work in a little, um, it's a shop, it's a crystal shop in uh, Epsom and I do my aura here. I am booked now until January 2022, I think, hang on. I'm booked a full 18 months ahead. So, which is great for me. But I get a lot of people that book once and then they come and book me again and then go on the waiting list. So it's, you know, I don't, I also, I'm one of not, I don't want to encourage people. I cannot stand people that don't take responsibility. So they come to me and after about two, three times, they're not getting the point. I won't see, I won't see them again. And I have to say, you know what, this, it's all about self-responsibility. I'm not here to walk your path for you. I'm here to put you on it. And what you do with that is your choice. I'm quite big on that. So I'm very honest. I'm very blunt. Um, some people say I've got no bedside manner, but I think honesty, is a, you just got to shove it out there, haven't you? That's what I do. That's how I've always operated. I'm never going to change that. So this is, look, look, give people a, a more of a sense of what it's like for them. So they sign up on the list. Their, yes. date, their date comes around. Yeah, the date comes go. around. They come in, they lie down. Actually, in the room I'm in, I came here because I didn't want to um, do this from my house because I've got four cats and I've got two young Siamese and we would not have heard a thing because they're, they're loud. So I thought, well, if I do it from where I do my normal um, energy work or mediumship, whatever you want to call it, it'd just be easier for me. So they would come in, lie down. I would go through their auric field. Um, so if they're lying down, the right hand side is their physical information and the left hand side is their emotional. Uh, it, it can intermingle, but that's kind of how I separate it. I'll go through the energy and say, um, Mrs. Joe Blogs then, or Mr. Joe Blogs, um, slight issue with the energy around the sacral or the pancreas, you know, your dad's here. And that's how it kind of transpires. A lot of times we'll go past life. Whether I do, I always say to people, are you open to past life? Some go yes, and some will go, no, it's a load of rubbish. I go, okay. So if, if something comes in, I'll just ignore it. It's their let's, choice. Let's go there for a minute. Okay. What is your understanding of what past life is, number one? And okay. then there's also a lot of controversy about how useful it is or, 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 or yes. that it's, it may be distracting to some people and that some people, you know, beg away from it. Cause it's like, no, I don't want to go there cause it's going to mess a person up. And like you said, yeah. I'm just reading out of the book anyway, you shouldn't get yeah. too hung up on it. You're just in the here now anyway. So yeah. it kind of is irrelevant, but at the same time, at other times, it seems to be incredibly relevant for people. People have major trauma blocked yes. up or they have either health issues that can be resolved yeah. by yeah. past life work. I mean, I don't know this. I'm just, this is what I've heard. What do you think? Yeah. So um, I'll give you an example. So I had a woman, this was through the hypnosis though. So she um, it's a very r random story, but her husband sent her to me because he was so fed up. He, she couldn't look in the bathroom mirror. I mean, she had a phobia. So I do deal with, the phobia side of it and he was so fed up having to put the towel over the bathroom mirror every day he just thought well we'll give it a go so in in her regression she was a victorian girl um little child she she's got an obsession in this lifetime with cleanliness of her feet is another weird thing that she had and in that other lifetime when we were going through it she wanted to go into this big house to wash her feet and she was effectively molested in that house by this great big man. And all she could see was the reflection of what was going on in the mirror in the bathroom. Now, did her subconscious make up a scenario to help her let it go? Was it a true memory? I can't answer that for you because I don't know. I've got to be honest, I don't know. Either way, it's quite incredible because from that, from that session afterwards, 
the bathroom mirror thing are gone. Yeah, that's the point that always gets me about about those stories and about people who are are skeptical. And I always say, you know, the kind of skeptical lobotomy, which is to just say, let me put it all out of my mind just by putting some label on it and saying, oh, yeah. I'm a skeptic. That yes. can't possibly happen. And I'll, I'll share with people that they've heard this many times on the show. But that's why I was so interested in kind of pursuing people who have looked at it scientifically, like, and I mentioned Dr. Julie Beichel at the Winbridge yes. Institute, because she did some kind of incredible work. She keeps hearing these stories over and over again. And then she says, okay, well, let's do some experiment here on the best we can with grief, because grief is real, right? Yes, I mean, yes, our absolutely. health insurance pays for grief counseling. Yeah. <laughs> our health insurance pays, if you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you medicine for grief, they'll pay for that. So it's completely integrated into our medical system. So what if we introduce now, as you just described, you did past life regression, medium yep. reading, let's introduce that into the equation. And then we can test that, right? We can test what's yep. most effective. That's the kind of stuff we do all the time. This is pharmacology where G Dr. Jules Weichel has her PhD in pharmacology. Yes. Turns out medium reading more effective than the talk therapy more effective than the drugs you might get, more effective than both combined. I would suggest if we did the same thing, I would guess, I would bet money that if we did the same thing with the people who have you done this wacky past life regression <laughs> stuff, we'd find the same thing. So how do we process yeah. that? You know, you're open. You're, you're so much more open to saying, I don't know if it's real. I don't know. It's effective. It seems to be effective. Yeah. Does it matter where it comes from? Well, if the outcome does. is she can... I I, I think, but I think, I think it does. And I think that's where we're at. And that's another question that I have. And we're going to save that to the, to the end, because it's the final question after we do a little demonstration here, which is okay. how can you help science get on the right track in terms of pointing at areas of research where your hunch tells you hey, that's something we should pursue. Yeah. That's something where there may be an app that we could develop down the road or something like that. But well, I'm going to yeah. put that on hold. That's, that's our okay. final, <laughs> final question is, Kathy, consult, doing some free consulting for dorky science. <laughs> what do you think we should do here? And if again, folks, it's so nice. It's so awesome of Kathy to agree to do this little demonstration here. It's no... No pressure. We don't know what's going to happen. And if nothing happens, that's totally fine. She's never done this on, on Skype, Zoom we're using. So she usually does it in person. But to give people a sense of what you do, is there anything we could try here that might? Okay. So if I tune into your, because I can't, I can't see you, you're on the smaller screen. Could you okay. go back to bigger so I can see yes. you better? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Here I am on the big screen. That's better. Okay. So if I just chew, I will, what I'm going to do is I think I'm probably, I'm big in remote viewing or not big in. I love remote viewing. I think it's all the same stuff. So really in challenging myself, I, I should be able to do this. If I can do this with you lying down in my presence, I should be able to do it this way. If energy is that way, I should be able to do it. So that's what I'm saying about myself. So if I can't, then my mind is too, even I'm constricted in, I suppose, in a mindset of what you can and what you can't do. I'm being honest. Does that make sense? I should be able to do it. <laughs> so I shall give it me. Do you want me to start now? Sure. Okay. So what I would do is go into your auric field, bioplasmic field. So I shut my eyes just because I'm doing it, I suppose, remotely. Are you open to people that passed over coming in as well? You bet. Okay, <laughs> go with me here. Okay. Um, it's interesting because I'm also, I think, might be linking into someone else within the home. So you might have to bear with me on that because I feel like I've got two going on. Would that make sense? It's very odd, this. So... I, uh, it's interesting. I'm sometimes I have to get taken to a location, which I do when I'm doing my. Um, have we got a Louis? Grandfather. Okay. 
can you have that? I've got someone talking to me about Louis or yeah, Louis, yeah. but I would go Louis. Yeah, they're shouting, Louis, they're shouting at me. So, okay. so Louis would be Louis would be a grandfather, and Louis to you. and Louis to me, and Louis would be a brother to me. Okay, I think I've got two here, a Louis and a Louis. Would that make sense? Well, only one has passed over. One's passed, but okay. I need to go into this. It's um, so your grandfather Louis has passed over. He's shouting. He's quite um. He's a strong man. <laughs> I feel like I want to do as I'm told, but not in a bad way. I, I would. I didn't actually want to get into the mediumship, but there we go. This is how this is obviously working out. I feel like um, if I tune into your aura a bit. I would work energetically in your lower, lower sacral root chakra point, anything to do with the male, the um, prostate area, all of that. Does that make sense? All root back. Okay. Okay. And also top of the neck, I think where the... Um, like but i don't know if this is someone else also in the house with a neck i've also got someone talking about an aortic valve compromise if that makes any sense i, I when i'm talking to my clients because i don't call myself a medium i ask them questions i know you're stumming up because <laughs> this is scientific does that make sense <laughs> all right so it's very um your, um, I'm going to assume it's your grandfather. I don't know it is. I'm just saying I'm giving you what I'm getting. He's taking me down. It's a weird thing. It's all white. Sometimes I get imagery. Does that make sense? So I have to piece together these little packets of data. And I, all I can see is like a white, like white squares. It's very odd. Squares. And quite a drop. I feel like if I looked down, I would be dropping down. I don't know. You're, you'll have to tell me afterwards. Okay. Um, have uh, he's talking about an aortic valve like rupture or aneurysm? I feel like I have to give you that. And you're, um, I would, if you were lying with me, I would, I don't mean that in that way. I mean, if you were in the, if I was doing a reading for you, I would go straight into lower back, sacral. You're aware of your chakra points. Yes, I, I assume. I, I, yes. In a very general way. You've got the way. gist of it, yeah. Okay. Wow, okay. They're also um, showing me, you um someone in what i would understand to be deep finance <laughs> whatever that means someone very very um within finance or real estate or what we call um uh, estate agency here i've got quite a muddle because i've got something from have we got marie marie yes linked to someone else not you yes uh do you have many i feel like i've got two lots of information hitting me at once right i mean i i can kind of tell you who that who that is or i could maybe not tell you who it is until later no then. that's fine I, i'll go with this wow okay i'm more i'm, I'm kind of i get see it's funny when I'm doing this, I even get fixated in my mind. I'm stuck on those <laughs> squares, the white square things. Well, they're not white. They're, they're like a um, like a wall. It's very odd. I can't kind of move beyond. I feel like I'm looking out at like quite a lot of. Um, do you know what it looks like? It sounds an odd thing. It looks like a cruise ship. A house that looks like a cruise ship. It's the only yeah. way I can put that. I can't yeah. Yeah, that's, make any uh, sense of this. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I'll kind of give you some stuff there. So these white squares are the are the house that I live in. It's a very modern house. It's kind of very close to the ocean, and it kind of okay. has. Does a it cruise. look like a ship? I, it, it would definitely, if you're from various points of view, yeah, right okay. on exactly. And it's unusual with the squares. It's these huge 
architectural squares. So. Okay, because you're whoever this Louis is, and I, I'm not going to say it's your grandfather or not. I'm just saying that, that I, I feel like I'm standing on a kind of patio, if that makes sense, looking out. And it, would you say your house is rather large? <laughs> yes. I live in England. We live in rabbit hutches that we have to accept. This, for me, that would be, um, can I say palatial? <laughs> for yes. me, it would be. Okay. Yes. And I think grandfather has a lot of pride in, in that. He would have been maybe someone that would have held a great pride with accomplishment or achievement materially. I don't well, mean that in a bad way. I just mean absolutely. a sense of success. Considering he, considering he came to the United States with five dollars sewn into the inside of his jacket when he was fourteen years old from Greece, and wow. you know. Okay, so I'll give you that one then, because there is a sense of really, really deep pride and accomplishment of perhaps where you or you and whoever have accomplished in your life does that make sense i'm sure. not trying to be all sort of hokey and sure 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 he's really good looking man and there's a mustache man as well okay that's passed over or or is in the family but really mustached and yeah. i've got the only reason i go like that i've got a thing about mustache men so <laughs> it bothers me did, did he have a mustache really we... it's quite a thick one i've got a, definitely a male with a thick 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 mustache at, at, at different time, my dad didn't wear a mustache all the time, but he did sometimes. And when he did, was it quite, <laughs> was yeah, it quite he, a sight? <laughs> uh, not really, no. Okay. Wow, okay. You are the sensitive child, I'm being told. Okay. Sibling wise, so you've got siblings, but I'm being told you're very sensitive. Well, you wouldn't do this if you weren't. So you do not mean you can kind of, <laughs> but they're saying, actually, you, you're very deep. You have a lot of, um, actually, you've been given quite a bit of um, crap within your lifetime. Does that make sense? That I think you've really had to bat off a bit and not internalize. But I do feel they say that you do kind of internalize it, whether you want to or not, male condition maybe. <laughs> but you're very honest and you've got integrity. And as a child, I'm being told, infinitely questioning everything. I would imagine you might have been a bit of pain in the, in the rump as a child in questioning. Would that make sense? Sure. Okay. I would suggest um, flushing of your system. <laughs> Aurically speaking, the auric fields can hold a listening. I would also go back maybe um, 17 years ago within your what I call timeline. So if you were with me, it's a bit difficult because I, I kind of want to get into your aura now properly <laughs> without a kind of doing it in this sort of by locating way. But I, I would probably need to pull some stuff about 17 years ago. It's not exact, but we this would go back into the aura field where you get stuff that's stuck so whether it's 17 years ago or 17 days ago that still sits with a soul does that make sense sure. and it is this sort of um deep questioning okay i've got a very strong female coming in this is to do with i want to say mary but i don't think it is i think i would want to say mary or mary not as in marry me, but Mary or Marie with the another only, female? The only Marie I connect with is still alive. Okay. But around the family circle? Yes. It would, okay. be, it would be my brother's wife. Okay. So my um, and any skeletal stuff with her? What, what kind of stuff? Skeletal. I don't know. Skeletal what that means. Or, or spine or hips. Um, I'm going to shove and, that at you. Yeah, hips and joints. She just had like an injection, a cell stem 
kind of thing for her knee. Specifically for for hips or lumbar four five back region. It was for the knees actually. Okay, but would it affect the hips and the lower back as well? Not the sure. reason I'm just being given to shove that out there in there as well. Okay. okay. Right. I would um, obviously I need to do this if you were lying um, on the couch. I would be probably doing what we were discussing. What is healing? But I do would do a sort of um, I would sort of try and clear the mental layer. I know that you want answers, and that's fine. But I do feel they're saying don't try and overanalyze. <laughs> right. fair? Don't overanalyze. Okay. See, I've got two people pulling me all different sort of ways. So your um your ancestry is not from here, obviously, and from a very proud nation. Right. Okay. Um, they're also talking about, um, when I say they, whoever I'm speaking to, um, they're talking about your partner, right? wife, wife partner, I don't, I, you know, whatever it is. Wow, okay. Would you say very formidable? <laughs> I don't, <laughs> be careful where we go here. No, I've been very, very, very strong, mentally really strong. Okay. She's a forensic psychologist. She's. Oh, God. Okay. So she has to think in a very, very conceptualized way, whereas you're a bit more expansive. Is that fair? You've got more what I call the female brain, and she might have more of what I call the male brain. Well, it's not about gender at all. It's I, just I, about I, energy. Yeah, no, I, I get what you mean. I don't, I don't. I don't really resonate with that because okay. I feel like, you know, I've gone down this science and logic path as a way to access the deeper. Okay. You know, and, and that's like one of the things I say on, on the show all often, especially for, you know, some people to understand, especially for women to understand that yeah. sometimes that's how men have to work. You know, yeah. I have to know it. I have to know it logically and overanalyze yeah. it before I can feel it. You know, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. But you are very deep. You do have that deep. Men tend to mask it perhaps a little bit more, but well, I think you to, to me it's it's like a given. I mean, who are we? Why are we here? If you're not ask if you're not asking yeah. those questions, what the hell are you doing? You yeah. know, watching the football game. So many people don't do they? They don't ask those questions. They just sure. take the the illusion is enough for them and they go sure. about their lives and things are, I think I might've just lost my connection in going into the mental layer. I'm sorry about that. But that's okay. You know what, okay. let's, let's, you, you did. And I appreciate it. I'm really it. hot. I, that made me really, um, there was a lot of heat about that. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. I don't know. Well, it, it, it's, it's always, it's always interesting. It's always great. Um, I appreciate it. You know what we ought to do because we've spent some great time together and your answers have been fantastic and I hope that they're useful to some people. I do want to return to that question that I had. Again, what is your hunch, Kathy, of what if somebody investigated it a little bit with kind of the best scientific means we have now? Yeah. Where could we make some progress that could help people? Where could we get that app? Where could we get that okay. breakthrough? Well, I think the problem with science or scientists is they've got a very, um, it's a very concrete viewpoint, isn't it? It's really hard to breach those walls, as it were. So what I would say is until science becomes more open-minded, Totally, totally get what you're saying. I'll give you a more specific example. We have auric cameras now. Auric yes, I've got one myself. Okay, so there is some technology. Yes. My understanding is that that technology has actually improved a little bit in the yes. last 10, 20 years. Where do you see similar kind of gains that could be made? You know, we have spirit communication devices that people are playing around with. You know, <laughs> where, where do you see some progress potentially being made in that merger of technology and kind of extended consciousness? And is that a direction that is, is positive? Do you think that's good? 
Um, personally, as you probably know, I'm a bit techie phobe. So the Aura camera for me is a teaching tool. It's great. It shows live aura, um, live chakra points. So if you're putting healing in, it, it shows. So you can demonstrate that if you're healing someone, it can affect the energy of that person and they can see it. Do you find from your experience that it is, for lack of a better word, accurate? Is the camera accurately portraying what you're seeing with your personal energy work? Um, it's not the tool that I use. I use it to teach, but I've, I'm hands-on. I prefer the organic way of doing it. I think it, it can show a certain, I think it shows a lot of heat. The one that I've got apparently is on bioplasmic. So, which is great because it can show different colors. There are certain aspects where if you put, just say love into the heart with someone that's got the heart chakras shut down a bit, it does it, the heart chakra does open up. So there are aspects of that, but I don't know. I'm not sure that technology, I'm not sure. I don't know if a meet, like you're saying, the mediumship app, that would be, I mean, we've got mediumship phone lines for that, haven't we? So, to be fair. Yes, yes, that's right. 81800 uh, medium. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, which I don't, I'm not a fan of, I must say. Yes. Well, uh, Kathy, it's, it's been great. Uh, so, and we've talked about so many topics. I hope people can follow along and find something interesting there. And I definitely hope that they'll check you out if they're, in the area. So what, what area, I have to confess, I don't know, what area of the UK of England are you, are you in again? So I'm in Epsom, which is in Surrey, famous for the, um, the Derby horse race. Awesome. <laughs> Great. It, it's on the outskirts of London. So any plans for any other ways to get your message out there? Do you have any book plans? Or, I haven't got or, I am writing a book that I've been writing for about 40 years. I'm joking. <laughs> but it keeps evolving because, because the work's evolving. I just get, look back and think, well, that's outdated now. So it's a minefield because we are evolving, I think, so quickly. Um, I've got my website. I love to write blogs. So I've got a lot of blogs that people can read if they're so inclined. Um, the, I've website, got, the website address, will include it in the show notes, but what is it? www.kathymingo.com. So, um, and I've got a thing called Consciousness TV, which I'm just trying to, it shows people A, how to see aura, which is really easy. To teach someone to see it is, if you can take the mind out of the equation, which is, I think the biggest problem for a lot of communication is the pesky mind. If you can take that out, um, seeing aura I can teach you to do that on the TV show. Um, and I'm also doing a ghost hunt thing I'm my personal I, I suppose my cheeky little habit is paranormal investigations <laughs> so that's what I'm doing I've got my first one on November 9th and we've got the technology we've got the obelises we've got a doll that has um EMF static and her eyes go blue when a spirit comes so it, it's fun that's my downtime I go to ghost places and do that that is so cool. That is so awesome. And so uh, again, folks, uh, it's been great spending this time with Kathy Mingo. We told you how to check out her website and please do that. And Kathy, just thanks so much for joining me and doing this demonstration as well. I hope it was all right. It seemed a bit, it wasn't how I normally do it. So I apologize. No, no, no apologies. It was great. And uh, again, thanks so much. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, everyone. Thanks again to Kathy Mingo for joining me today on Skeptico. Wow, what a fantastic interview. You know, we've interviewed on the show, of course, many, many fantastic scholars, academics, researchers. But, you know, for the pound for pound quality information about at least giving us a direction to look at some of these deeper questions, uh, can you beat that? Uh, just pretty amazing in a very short period of time. One question I tee up from this interview, and that is, what do you make of auras? Do you think the aura thing is real? And what is the relationship between auras and healing, if we can speculate about that?
So let me know your thoughts to that question. If you want to connect with me and other people from the show, I recommend the best place to do it is the Skeptical Forum. You'll definitely get an answer from me, or you most likely will. I'm on 90%. You'll get an answer from me if you go to the Skeptical Forum. I'm kind of hit or miss on other places, just depending on how scattered I am. But Skeptical Forum, you'll find me and some other really great people. I have learned so much from the Skeptical Forum. I always say that. But if you do want to check that out, that's great. It's there for free. And I hope you'll have a good experience. If you don't have a good experience, you let me know, and we'll get on the people who are getting in your way. So do check out the forum if you're so inclined. And of course, check out the Skeptico website for all our previous shows, over 400 of them. Again, they're all available there for free. MP3 download, you can take them, run with them, do what you like. No firewall, no ads, any of that. Check out Skeptico.com. I have a number of shows coming up. I have some great ones already in the can that I can't wait to get out to you. I'm even doing the show every week and I still can't stop getting more and more content. Content glut, isn't there? Aren't you like me? Don't you find that there's so many more shows to listen to than you can get around to? So you're going to have to pick and choose, but we all pick and choose. You can pick the shows that you want to listen to and hopefully I can offer you something that adds to your knowledge base. Of course, if you like the show and feel a need to share the show with other people who need it, please do so. And as always, take care and bye for now. <music>